Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman bringing you another episode of Trailmakers, and today we've got a huge update. For the first time in Trailmakers, we have the introduction of logic blocks and sensors as well. So this is going to open up a whole new realm of possibilities and uh, even ways that we can improve some of our previous vehicles that we've made. And there's, these, these aren't the only things in this update, though. This is actually a pretty big update with a lot of new stuff. So what we're going to do in this episode... We're going to take a look at the notes of the update, uh, see what kind of changes have, have been made. We're going to check them out in the game, and then we're going to do some stuff with the sensors. And I would love to hear from you guys in the comments about what you'd like to see me do with this new update on the channel. But anyway, let's head over to the patch notes and see what this update has in store. That way you know what you can, we can even do in the first place. All right, here we go. The logic update is now live. So a cool thing for those of you who play the game, they've added daily challenges. You can get experience by completing these different daily tasks. We'll be adding some more challenges and rewards and stuff in the future. I don't really know what the rewards are for these uh, challenges right now. I only got to le level two by like killing some chickens and doing some workshop stuff. All right, scrolling down, I'm just going to go over the major stuff here. Obviously, we have the new logic blocks. We have an AND gate, OR gate, and XOR gate, the three basic logic blocks, and also a distance sensor as well. So you can use sensors to activate everything on your vehicle pretty much if you want to. Apparently, they've added some new parts too. We have a spiked wheel, rounded corner block, small rounded corner block, a porthole paddle, which might be good for some water stuff. We might have to experiment with that. A straight suspension. Uh, new spinning servo graphics and a new shield plate. So yeah, let's go ahead and check out these blocks in the game. All right, so first up we have the logic block. So from left to right, we have the and, we have the or, and we have the X or. Now, one of the things I was thinking might be really cool is um, two player concepts because they have also added the ability, which is actually pretty major for um, when you're, your seats, you can actually designate what seats are able to control what parts of your craft. So you can actually create uh, vehicles and creations with multiple seats and depending on what seat you get in you can control different things so all you have to do is go to the settings here and you can see that you can choose what your seats can control you see if I choose this seat I can actually make it not control some things so what I was thinking about for stuff like this you can like uh, have two player like tanks where somebody drives somebody uh, controls the turret you could also have uh, a two-player vehicle that only works when the players are pressing the controls at the same time. So, for instance, if you want to turn left, both seats have to be hitting the turn left button. And that's what you can do with some of the logic gates here. Because you can set the logic gates on controls. So, right now, I have all of the logic gates set to W and S. So, you can see if I press W, the logic gates activate with the green input. And when I press S, the logic gates activate with the red input. So this you can then output to your wheels, your rotating servos, your steering hinges, etc., etc. And you can see with uh, the first logic gate there, the AND, you can see that the input is activated, but it is not sending an output. And that is because the second seat is not receiving the same input. So the only way to send an output with the AND gate is if all of the inputs are active. And because that second seat is not active, it is not sending an output. So if you were to hook that up to your steering and your gas and stuff, then you would need both players in each seat to be sending the same input at the same time. Otherwise, your vehicle isn't going to work. So that could be a really cool concept that I might have to try out with somebody soon. So now the other thing that we have is the sensor and the sensor is that black block there. So I have this set to steering. So you can see when I block the sensor, the sensor turns on. You can also invert it so the sensor turns off, which would be good for like landing gear. So that way when you take off, the sensor will deactivate when it doesn't detect the ground anymore. Then your landing gear can automatically retract and so on. So um, I think for this episode, we're going to be trying to use the sensors to improve some of our previous designs that we've made in the past. In particular, the missile launcher, because with these sensors now, you can keep a thruster activated without needing a seat attached to that thruster, which means that we can actually detach missiles from our craft and then have the sensor activate the thrust. Whereas before, we needed to have a seat on the missile, which has made it unreasonably large. All right, but before we get into that, let's uh, take a look at what else this update has to offer. So under our aerodynamic blocks here, you can see that we've got a couple new pieces. We've got this uh, big rounded corner block. So you can finally round off those corners on uh, on your creations. And we've also got a small rounded corner block. 
Now, the issue I'm seeing with the small rounded corner block is um, you can't mirror it very easily. Like, see, if I want to put it right there on this side of the seat, but then I want to also put it on the other side of the seat, it's not mirrored. However, there's a way that you can kind of fool it. If you duplicate it, it actually mirrors it for you. So now you have two different mirrored pieces. And then if you want to create another one of these ones over here, you can do that. And then if you want to create another mirrored one over here, you can just copy the other one. So that's my little workaround that I found to create a mirrored version of these uh, small rounded corner blocks. And the other thing in the aerodynamic section is the paddle. So now I'm going to probably try to do something with the paddle soon. I actually want to try to create a paddle boat like with the rotating wheel of paddles and see how this works compared to like a normal aerodynamic block. That'd be kind of cool. All right, what else do we got? We've also got, this is a new shield piece here, a two by one. We had a two by four and a two by two. Now we got a two by one. The spinning servo looks completely different now. So that's what the spinning servo looks like. It used to just be like a square, like a flat square. And now it has like these teeth on it. These like almost like a cog teeth type shape, which is really cool. We've got this, we got a porthole. So for those of you creating submarines and underwater stuff, this is actually a really cool addition to add some cool aesthetics to those. All right, then also we have a spiked wheel, which is the same size as the standard wheel, but uh, it has more traction. The pointy bits are for traction. And I think it looks, that's a really cool looking wheel. That's probably gonna be like my go-to now when it comes to the smaller wheels at least. All right, and then we have a whole new section of logic, which I've already demonstrated. All right, so now that we've taken a look at all the different parts, let's go ahead and uh, let's let's bring in. So we, we tried to do a missile launcher uh, plane and there were some difficulties that we ran into. Let me show you what this plane looks like if you guys didn't see that episode. All right, so here is the missile launching plane and these gigantic things hanging down from the wing are missiles. And the reason why they are so gigantic, man, this is loud and annoying right now. The reason why they are so gigantic is because if we detach the missiles from our plane, the thrusters will not stay active unless there is a seat attached to the thrusters. However, I did a little bit of testing before this episode and I've discovered that a sensor is enough by itself to keep the thrusters activated. So that means we can build a much more ergonomic and aerodynamic and much more weight efficient thruster because we don't need to have this huge bulky seat attached to it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to delete these ridiculous things from our vehicle here and we are going to build ourselves some new thrusters that are going to be much more well designed and much more easy, hopefully, to launch. And then we're going to see how that works. All right, so here is our prototype missile here. So um, if I just if I just take it off, you can see it goes. It works. It actually goes. So oh, let's bring it back. So I'm actually curious now how balanced is it? I'm just going to send it up into the air. Uh, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, it definitely goes fast. It is definitely more heavy towards the sensor side, which means I'm going to have to put some weight on the other side. All right, I think I figured it out. Check this out. It is much straighter, much straighter. It's I can't even take a look at it. It's just going straight up. All right, so I think we have a good... I think we have a good missile weight, so I'm going to save this as our new missile. And I'm actually, I want to spawn in the other one just as a comparison to see the difference between the two missiles. All right, so here is the before and after. This was our previous missile and this is our new missile. So I think it's going to be much more, much more effective and much, much easier to put on our craft. All right, so here's our craft. Uh, here it is without the extended legs. We could also put some uh, auto automatically retracting landing gear on this thing as well. So now we just got to figure out though how to put the missile or where to put the missile on this thing. So I'm all right, I think I'm going for the under the wing method again, which means that the missiles are going to be down at this height. Okay. All right, so I'm also going to build some retractable landing gear because right now the wheels were not long enough to uh, compensate for the, the missiles hitting the ground. So I'm going to try to make the landing gear automatically retractable as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have our landing gear ready to retract. We have... Are missiles ready to launch? I think I remember what button launches my missiles. 
And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be good. So the landing gear is actually ready to retract at the maximum possible distance, which is 25. I don't know what that means. 25 blocks, 25 meters, 25, I don't know what that means. And the missiles are set to turn on the thrust after it goes five units away from the wings with those sensors on top. So that's hopefully we can uh, take off here without any problem. I actually haven't tested out the flying ability of this with the new missiles, but everything seems good. Oh, our landing gear retracted. I didn't even notice it uh, works pretty well. Okay, so now we're gonna launch the missiles. We're gonna see if they work and wait a minute. Oh, oh, I made a mistake. You can see that the, the missile thrust is also attached to my seat. I forgot about that, but uh, that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, we're just gonna release the missiles and go. Oh, <gasps> that looked amazing. That worked even better than I imagined. I love how they, they, they dropped for like a second and then they activated, which is exactly what I was hoping that they would do. Okay, so now let's come in for a landing. Let's see when our landing gear comes down. I honestly don't know what to expect as far as the landing gear goes. Oh, and the landing gear is interfering with my wings. Uh-oh. Well, that was anticlimactic. All right, let's try this again. So now the missiles are not giving me any extra thrust, which might be a bad thing, actually. They were probably helping me because the missiles were actually counteracting their own weight when they had the thrust. So I might actually want to keep that. All right, let's launch them again and go. Yes. Oh, that is great. All right, now let's try to land on this island. Let's see if we can do a better landing this time. I really want to see the landing gear retract automatically. I mean, not retract, but extend automatically. All right. Here we go. Eh. Eh. What happened to the landing gear? What? Shouldn't it have come back down? Oh, oh, okay. I, I accidentally, I didn't realize. I put these on toggle. They're not supposed to be on toggle. I don't know why I did that. All right, let's see if we can take off from here. We can do this again. All right, that explains why the landing gear didn't go down. Oh, no. Get up in the air. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot. Actually, I wanted anyway. I wanted to reactivate these missiles to actually help me uh, fly. All right, here we go. Lift up. Lift up. Whoa, that was close. All right, we're going to aim for... Um, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to... Let's aim for that wall. Let's see if we can set the missiles on a straight path to that wall. All right, here we go. Uh, and fire. Oh, I forgot that they actually dropped down first. Which actually is kind of cool. Whoa, look at those parts. They went flying off the ramp. All right, now let's try it. The landing should work now. You can see the, the sensors underneath are activated. They're lit up, which means that the landing gear is retracted. So now, oh, there it goes. Well, the landing gear worked. We just have a terrible plane is the problem. All right, so right now the missiles do not go straight. Which I don't know if that's an issue or not. Like the missiles kind of drop down, which is good if we want to like drop them almost like bombs, like missile rocket powered bombs, which is actually kind of cool. Now that I'm thinking about it, which means if we want to drop them on that sign there or on that wall, we have to be flying over it kind of like this and then drop the missiles. And we missed. All right, now let's go in for a hopefully better landing. Eh, eh, the landing gear's down and we broke it off. <laughs> this vehicle is just too front heavy is what it is right now. I think we need bigger wings. All right, so I've extended my wings by quite a bit, but you know what we can also do is use one of the new uh, aerodynamic parts. We can use this small round corner block to actually round out the edges here. So we can put that right there. And if we want to put it on the other side, we have to make sure that we duplicate it so it gets mirrored just like that. So that's looking pretty good. All right, so hopefully this will give us more lift and control. And I'm actually going to set the uh, the angles of these. I'm going to lower it to 80 because I feel like the 90, it was then interfering with my wings ability to give me a uh, roll. All right, let's see if this helps us and gives us any more control ability. All right, please lift up. Please lift up. Yes. Okay. Oh, this is feeling way better already. All right. All right. Not bad at all. All right. Now let's see if we have more control to get over to this sign.
All right, we're up in the air again. Let's try this, and we're gonna launch the missiles. And we we have terrible aim. We have really terrible aim. Well, li let's at least see if our landing is any better this time with our huge wingspan. Okay. All right. When are the sensors gonna pick up the ground? There they go. Oh, this is so much easier. Oh, those wings made all the difference. They can actually keep our nose up. All right, let's repair ourselves. And now we are ready for missile flight again. I really ju I just want to hit that wall. Like, it really shouldn't be that hard. It's a completely vertical wall. All I have to do is be aiming in the right direction and it'd be really hard to miss. Okay. But as you can see, it's not that easy to just aim in the right direction. Eh. Get it. Get it. That, that was something, I guess. That was... Oh, no. <laughs> We're just bad at this. I'm gonna move my thrust back a little bit because I feel like just adjusting my weight back might, uh, might help us. Oh, yeah. This is nice. This is much better with the weight back like that. All right. All right. I'm going for the floating island. There's that floating island right there. We're gonna missile it. It's not gonna do much, but, uh, imagine if it just fell out of the sky. Why is that ring not on fire? Oh, now it is. Now it's on fire. All right, and go! Our missiles went surprisingly straight there. I thought they were gonna drop down more, but they didn't. They went really straight. Can I repair in the air? How cool would that be? Find flat ground to repair. Okay, that's unfortunate. All right, let's go ahead and land. I want to try that again. All right, nice smooth landing. Landing gear is down. And it worked. We actually, I thought we were going to break our landing gear, but we didn't. All right, here we go. Lifting up. This plane is so much easier to fly with a bigger wing wingspan. All right, let's try this again. We're going for the floating island. How's our landing gear looking now? Is it interfering? No, it's not interfering. That's good. All right, I'm liking this update. I'm liking the sensor blocks are really good. Landing gear is a thing now. Automatic landing gear. Missiles and stuff can be activated, like thrusters and objects can be activated outside of your own seat, which is awesome. All right, and... And fire! Oh, that was weird. They behaved a little bit weird that time. All right, I'm gonna land on top, and then we're gonna use this ramp, I hope, to kind of uh, fly off this island. What my plane doesn't have is ground control. It doesn't have any steering on the ground, which is unfortunate. Oh boy, that's bad. Ugh. All right, perfect. We're facing the right way anyway. All right, floating island. Here I come. So I'm, I'm liking my plane here. It's just, it has, it, it does have the unfortunate tendency to explode at random. Which, uh, I guess that's okay. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure why. I, I don't know why it explodes at random. But, uh, I guess when you have missiles attached to it that, with their thrust constantly on to keep you flying, then maybe that's not the best. Wait, is my gun? Am I, do I have my, my build gun outside of my cockpit? What am I doing with my build gun outside of my cockpit? Alright, we're gonna get this floating island this time. This is the one. I'm calling it right now. Like, I could just, like, go really, really close to the floating island, but I would love to get it from a distance. They would just feel that much more epic. All right, here we go. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. We nailed it. All right. I think that is a great spot, then, to, uh, to wrap up this episode. So, remember, let me know down in the comments, please. I can't really think of that many ideas on what to do with the logic itself. All of my ideas that I've thought of so far can be done with just sensors. So think about, whoops, think about anything that uh, you would need logic for. But as far as vehicles goes, because remember, Trailmakers is a vehicle-focused uh, game. What can we use logic for? What would you like to see happen? And also, what do you want to see happen with the other parts of this update? We have sensors that we can incorporate too. We have the paddles. I definitely want to do some paddle stuff. Can we use logic with paddles in some way? So think about all this stuff. I'll be reading your comments and uh, seeing if any of that inspires uh, another awesome Trailmakers episode. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.